Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, today I'm going to answer some questions that I get asked a lot about heaven. And one of those questions that I get asked quite often is, what do we do all day in heaven? How do we not get bored? Okay, so these are this is the big question that I'm going to pose today, okay? Now, you've got to remember here, I'm only doing this in my personal opinion um, based on what I experienced when I died in 2001 and I went to heaven for about five years. During that time, I was actually in what people call heaven for over a year. It could have been a year and a half. I'm not sure because there's no clock on the walls there, right? Um <laughs> There's no clocks on the wall. So there you go. There's one thing that we don't be aware of straight away is that time. Okay, because time does not exist there. And that's another question that I get asked a lot too. How do we exist if there's no time? Because everything is now in the present. Okay, so let me explain some things. First off, I'm going to go through a list of things that we don't do in heaven. Okay, then I'm going to tell us about what we do do in heaven. And then I'm going to also use my book, Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. Here it is if you want a copy. The link is below in the description. 369 pages. I've already got my pen in there where I'm going to quote from today. Okay, so there's my book. All right. So what don't we do in heaven? I've made a list. <laughs> I've made a list because I do research my videos before I do them, right? So let's go through some simple things so we can understand it, right? <laughs> First thing before I start is that we must get rid of this preconceived notion or belief system that we hold about this three-dimensional world that we live in right now, okay? We must remember here that everything that we do here on earth is because it's made up of what society is dictating to us, okay? So let's go through this list so society will become clear. First thing, do we sleep in heaven? No, <laughs> we don't need to sleep, okay? The only reason why we sleep here on earth is because our physical body gets tired because it uses that charge of electricity, which is energy, right? Please follow this. We put food into this body, which is our vehicle, right? We put food and water to sustain that energy, okay? Once the energy depletes, it's like fuel in our car. So as soon as the fuel lines on our car goes down we've got to go and fuel up again right so our bodies here on earth we have to regenerate and re um, resupply that fuel in our body and how we recoup our body is through sleep up in heaven we don't have a body so we don't need to do it so sleeping is something we don't need to do that's only based on us having a physical body here on earth, right? So therefore, the next thing is we don't yawn in heaven. There's no yawning, okay? I was up there for over a year and walking around and I did not see one person yawn. There's no need for it because if you look at medicine, which I'm not a medical doctor, okay? So please remember here, it's only research that I do on these topics. The reason why we yawn is that our lungs are expelling all the old and stale air out of our body so it can go into that sub unconscious state for anywhere from how long do we sleep? A couple of minutes through to a couple of hours. Okay, if you're lucky, you get 10 or 12 hours sleep in one hit without waking up. So that's our body's natural way of expelling all the stale air out of our lungs so we breathe good while we're asleep. We don't need to sleep, so therefore we don't need to yawn, right? It's just a thing that our body does, okay? So then the next thing is there's no pooing and weeing. Yes! Again, we put food in the mouth. It's got to come out somewhere, right? <laughs> I hope you like that one. 
So there's no bathrooms in heaven, okay? There's no unlimited supply of toilet rolls, which I'm sure some of you over the past two years, you know, with toilet rolls supplies being non-existent. <laughs> Come on, have a giggle there, okay? We don't need toilet rolls because we don't need to use a bathroom, okay? Because no food goes in, so no food has to come out somewhere, okay? <laughs> Which leads me to the next one. No farting or burping. Yay! No bodily explosions of gaseous emissions. Let that one rip for a minute. Oh, come on. We've got to be laughing here, okay? Okay, so we don't make body noises, okay? Because we don't have a body, okay? Oh, my gosh. Next one on my list is no pains, muscle aches, or injuries. I did not see one person with an amputated leg. I didn't see anyone with a Band-Aid on. I didn't see anyone with other walking sticks or other aids, medical aids, that would suggest that they had injuries, illnesses or other imperfections, okay? And imperfections is an important word here, okay? We don't have a physical body. So all our illnesses like leukemias, cancers, motor neuron diseases, all our um, other things that we get, head colds, viruses, they don't exist because we don't have a physical body, okay? We don't have muscles, so therefore there's no sprains because it's just not relevant, so it just doesn't exist, okay? There's none of that up there. The next thing is occupations. Here we go with society, as I said at the beginning. The only reason why people have occupations on this planet is so that we earn money. Hang on, let's start again because it's a formula. We go to work to earn money so we can buy things. <laughs> True, isn't it? We only go to work to earn money to buy things. So if we don't have to buy things, there's no reason to go to work, right? Because there's no currency, there's no money, there's no trading or exchange of goods and services. Okay, so we don't have an occupation in heaven. Everybody is the same. And that's one reason why I say in a lot of my videos, we put so much onus on this planet, onto our title, onto our degrees and other qualifications that we earn. We put so much onus on, I do this. You know what it's like when you meet someone at a party for the first time and you go up to them and you say, oh, hi, I'm Linda. What do, what's your name? Oh, hi, you're Dave. What do you do? And Dave comes back and says, oh, I'm an electrician. That's a title. Okay, so in heaven, we don't have that title. We don't have that occupation. Okay, so I always say, if you're going to really blow the mind off people when you introduce yourself and they say, oh, hi, what do you do? Don't mention your job title, title. Okay, what do I do? Oh, I spread love to other people. I'm out there promoting good health and wellness in others. I go out and I make other people feel great about themselves. That's what I tell people I do. I bring awareness about near-death experience, ghosts and other paranormal things on the planet. And people look at me like, huh? It's like the robot, the, the, don't compute, don't compute. Because we're so conditioned by society that when someone says, hey, what's your name? Yeah, okay, what do you do? We always give that job title, okay? So get that out of your head. This is where we have to start disbelieving what society has conditioned us to think is true, right? Because when we go home, job descriptions mean butt kiss. It's non-existent, so therefore it's not relevant, okay? So we don't need an occupation because we don't have to earn money to buy things because in heaven there's no shops. <laughs> there's no barter or exchange, okay? We don't need to buy things because what we create in our mind 
becomes the reality. Yes, I love it. Okay, so there's no gardening. What? But I like going out in the weekend with my with my garden gloves on. I get my secateurs and I get my big shearing things and I got my electric hedger. I'm so proud I own my electric hedger. But we don't need any of that because in heaven, all the plants oh, are a living consciousness that are equal to us. Okay? Plants, flowers, trees, everything has its own existence. So therefore, we don't have to cut a tree down to make a building. Wow. Huh. We don't have to cut flowers to put them on our kitchen table. Huh. Because all we have to do is think and they're there. Huh. So if we think and create something, here we go. We're going deep now, right? If I want to be holding on to a beautiful bunch of flowers, do they have their own consciousness? Yes. Because it's all through the connection that I'm going to talk about very soon. So I'll just write down here the flower, bunch of flowers. So I remember to talk about it, okay? So we don't have to do gardening because everything is self-serving up there, okay? Everything is connected but individual and everything has its own awareness, okay? So driving, do we have to drive? Well, thank goodness, because there's no vehicles. We don't need to drive anywhere because it's not relevant. Okay? I followed this lady around and I reckon she walked 150 miles. She was doing this long stroll. Like, you know you do on a Sunday morning where you're no hurry at all. And you're just taking your time to watch and observe and take in the scenery. I watched her following behind her for, I reckon, 150 miles. So that's coming up to nearly 200 kilometres if you're in Australia. And during that time, she did not get tired because she doesn't have the muscle aches, right? She didn't have to sit down because her body got weary. She didn't have to do any of that. We just continuously go along with what we want to do, okay? So we don't have to drive from one location to the other. If she had decided, oh, today I want to go over to that city 150 miles away, she all she had to do was close her eyes and think about it because that's what it is. We think we create, okay? Now, I just said something that's a mistake, because in heaven, another thing we don't do, we don't blink. Okay? I don't remember blinking for over a year and a half. Even when I was with Karina, my great, 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 great grandmother, standing in the white space. And all that time that we spoke for, I never blinked. Okay? Now, we've got to go back to medical here. Why does our body blink? It's our natural way of watering our lenses so they don't dry out and we lose our vision. It's also to collect any dust particles, etc. Blink, 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 blink. So we're cleaning our lenses so we can see. Up in heaven, there's no dust. Which brings me to the next point. There's no housework. Oh my God, thank gosh for that one. No housework, okay? We don't have to dust, clean, vacuum, mop, wash up dishes, okay? We think, we create, and it's done. Well, there's no dishes because we don't have to eat, right? Okay, so now that I've gone through a basic list of things that we don't do in heaven, what do we do up there all day? What do we do? pause because this is going to be sounding so weird for so many when we take away all what society says that dictates what we must do go to work do your gardening mow your yard wash your dishes all this stuff we've got to get rid of 
disband it, disprove it, disbelieve or uneducate yourself, unlearn all those behaviours that we do because then you're open to what I'm about to say. Are you ready? First one, we communicate on a far deeper level. We don't have to talk like I'm talking to the screen now on my computer. When we talk, it's telepathic as well as here. If I think a thought, geez, I'd love a cup of coffee. Everybody else hears that thought. If they want to, because we can turn it off. Okay. So everybody up there has this conscious awareness and it's not just the humans, it's the animals and every other life form. They all have this conscious awareness. Okay, in my book I talk about landing in the field of flowers. Okay, so let me just go here to some of the dot points that the flowers did. So I'm on page 70 of my book now. Okay, here it is, these dot points. Okay, okay. On earth, in order to move, we must use the muscles within our legs and feet to order in order to physically move. So when I was standing on these flowers, they physically moved out of my way so I did not crush them, okay? Because they've got their own conscious awareness. The flowers knew that I was going to do before I, I actually did it. What? The flowers knew what I was going to do before I even did it. Because as soon as I have that intention of that split second neuro path, pathway um, thought process, as soon as I put out that intention, I'm going to walk forward, they already knew it as well because they're also picking up on that intention of what my thoughts are creating. So they knew before I made a step that I was going to make that step. So they moved before I did it. Okay. Prior to learning how to actually move around, I realized that these flowers knew how I would be able to move without hurting or killing them. So there again, we are so connected through this conscious awareness. Okay, They understood that I had no intention of hurting them as I was about to walk on them. Okay, So they knew my emotion, which is part of that conscious awareness. Okay. There was no judgment on behalf of the flowers and no accusations that I was doing something wrong by trying to physically walk because I had been so conditioned in my life for the 36, 35 years that I'd been in human form as Linda. So when I died and I was in heaven, it was natural for me to actually physically make a step with my foot. But they understood that process. They understood that I was learning how to be back in this world where I didn't need to physically move my foot. It was all energy, okay? They accepted me. No judgment, no accusations. And that's what we do all day in heaven. We do not judge others for what they do. We do not accuse or we do not defend ourselves for what we do. We hold no judgment, okay? That's one thing that I love teaching people here. Why do we get so angry with others that we have to defend our own actions, okay? All right, so let me just keep going with the things on my list here. So we're all in this conscious awareness, okay? Next one, we contemplate, consider, and self-analyze not only who we are once we get past the life of Linda and I go back to my soul level where I've lived thousands of lifetimes I may have had 6,000 wives 4,000 husbands 2 million sexual partners including the 300,000 children that I've birthed or conceived as a male then you've got the cousins, the aunties, the neighbours, the stepsisters, the... Oh my gosh, the list is endless, correct? Okay, so we contemplate, we consider and we analyse. Everywhere I went, 
doesn't matter if it was on the top of the highest mountains, in the 15th floor of the buildings. It doesn't matter if I was walking through the laked area or if I was walking through the fields of trees and the forests. There was chairs there. Now, I said before, we don't need to sit down when we're tired. Our body doesn't get uh, uh, um, aching if we walk 15,000 kilometres. So why are the chairs there? When I did my life review, why were there these long pews? There's my life review. I use it as a front cover. So when I was there looking at all my memories in this box, why were there chairs there? Because it's an opportunity to pause and reflect and contemplate. You've got to remember how many people are in this place. Millions of people. So the one that I like going to is the duck. I was watching this flock of ducks. I think that's the word, the collective term for duck. I think it's a group or a flock of ducks. I was watching this group of ducks. And as I concentrated and I thought about these ducks that I was observing... I became the collective group of ducks. I could be every single one of these ducks. So the one at the front, I knew who was behind me. The one at the side, I knew what was to the left. If I went over to the woods at the back, I could see all the ones in front of me. I was the whole group at once as a collection of these ducks altogether. But then, as I thought about just one duck in that flock, I became that duck. I could feel its feathers. I could feel its padded, um, webbed feet. I could feel its wings as it's fluttered. I could feel its beak and its tongue. I could feel the connection of every life that duck had ever lived. Every life lesson that duck had ever learnt. I could see into that existence of eternity that that duck had already lived. And you wonder why we don't get bored. Because if that's just one duck where I sat on one of these big benches and I'm just being this duck. You know, you might be sitting there thinking, oh my God, that's not important. What do you mean it's just a duck? But this is where we get out of that limited belief of this three-dimensional world and we start putting onus on what is really important. Our job doesn't matter because up there we don't have one. The car we drive doesn't matter because up there we don't need to travel. We just think and we go there. Our clothes, now funniest enough, people were wearing clothes. But we can be in any clothes that we want We don't have to go to a seamstress or or a sewer to get them made. We think and we are wearing them. And I explain that in my book of watching people change instantly into other things. Animals changing into little boys, etc. Okay. So we spend a long time, because there's no time up there, right? Contemplating, considering and analysing everything and everyone around us it is very time consuming because I did it for a year and a half and boy I wanted to stay because I wasn't even on the tip of that iceberg it would be an eternity to experience everything else that everything else had been through so it became one with me okay we do what we want and we be what we want so if you want to go running you can run. Your legs will physically um, will appear to move, but remember, there's no physical muscles in our legs. If you want to ride a bike, you can ride a bike. If you want to climb the mountain, you can climb the mountain. And believe me, these the mountains I saw were 15, 15 times as high as Everest. So imagine the time involved if you were standing at the bottom and thought, right, I'm going to climb the sucker today. 
One step, two step, three step, four. How long would that take you to go up four or five kilometers? Or you can just think it and you're already standing on the top. Free will reigns in heaven. Okay? We have a total euphoric plethora of love. It's a continual energy bliss. Now that is a new quote and I think I'm going to put it somewhere because I love what I wrote. So I'm going to read it again. A total euphoric plethora of love. Continual energetic bliss. So what do we do all day when we're just loving everything and everybody and ourselves? <sighs> Would you ever get tired of doing that? Would you ever lose that appreciation, that respect and value for what you do? Of course we do. I say it like this. Imagine somebody who lives in the desert and they're there for years and years in the sand on the desert. Someone comes to them and they say, oh, do you want to go to the beach today? Wow, beach, oh yeah, the excitement builds. Look at me, I'm getting, oh my God, I'm going to the beach today. See that excitement, see that, that anticipation, right? They go to the beach and it's like, wow, oh my God, look, there's shells. Oh my God, my sand, oh my God, look at that wave. Feel that excitement of that energy, which is emotion. OK, so now imagine the person who lives at the beach every day. They come out, they open their blinds of a the morning, they go, oh, yeah, more waves. Look at that, more sand. They lose that value. They lose that excitement. They lose that emotional attachment of appreciation, value how precious something is. Do you know where I'm leading here? Because up there, everything is valued, treasured, pressured and adored. Why do you think we come here for? Because here we learn those lessons. Value. We learn to appreciate. We learn to be gracious. We learn to be thankful. We learn to love. So when we go home, it's that constant stream of emotion. Thoughts? Comment below. Love to hear them. My email address is below. My contacts are below. Reach out and contact me if you think differently. Okay? Talk soon. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.